to this computer. Okay. We are rocking and rolling. I didn't want to do that. All righty. So we are going to get started here, everybody. Forgive my, my technical difficulties. You guys see the screen. If you can't see the screen or you can't hear me, just let me know. Okay. So just for my soul ministries says good morning, good morning to you. Again, this is our fervent book study, our fervent book study. We are on chapter five. We are hanging in there. Oh gosh, yes, we are hanging in there. So what you have on your screen is who we are, what Just For My Soul Ministries is about, you know, our vision, peace and purpose for the soul, how? Through truth, love, and relationship. Peace and purpose for the soul. Three ways, truth, love, and relationship. In my years of biblical counseling, uh, 10, 10 plus years, that's all I've found that works. Truth, love, and relationship. Uh, my sweet friend, Michelle, on our panel guests, this, is, this, this relationship is not about being religious. It's about being spiritual institutions will teach us religion becoming spiritual has to do with your intimacy with god because he is spirit peace and purpose for the soul through truth love and a spiritual relationship with god our mission is to love and serve everyone how through biblical teaching personal testimony prayer and mentoring for the glory of God. Why is mentoring in there? This journey is not meant for anybody to walk alone. Every one of the panel guests, every one of these panel guests, we have a relationship where we have had to walk portions of our journey together. When you can't pray for yourself, somebody else can pray for you. When your humanity is taken over, their spirit will grab you and cover you. This is not meant when you need to learn, when you need to understand revelation, when you get to a crossroads and it's a fight. This is not meant for you to do by yourself. Biblical teaching, the word, God is the word more of the word, biblical teaching, personal testimonies. And I will announce to you in 2021, the aspect of personal testimonies, we've had to get away from a little bit due to COVID when we were meeting in person, but they will be back live and in color. Yes, they will. Personal testimonies, prayer, prayer, our place of power and mentoring for what? The glory of God. God. It's why you were created, to glorify God with the life that he has given you. Just For My Soul Ministries has several opportunities for you to grow in Christ, grow in that relationship we're talking about, grow in the intimacy and the spirituality that we're speaking of. Those three opportunities are on your screen. We have Wednesday prayer moments, we pray on Wednesday at 5.30 a.m. and at 9 p.m. Um, the phone number and the access code is there. We have a conference call because there are individuals that join us faithfully. 9 p.m. is off the chain. Ms. Linda can tell you, Ms. Jennifer can tell you, um, these people are not on social media. These are some men and women that walk with Christ that could probably teach us a thing or two. They are on. Every Wednesday night, we have brief Bible study and prayer. 5.30 a.m., it's Facebook Live, um, so that you guys, it's recorded, and you guys that are on social media can go back and visit and watch it later on through your work day. Our second opportunity are monthly teaching sessions every second Saturday, 9.30 a.m., Facebook Live. And again, personal testimonies will be returning to our monthly teaching sessions. Uh, and they may be done intermittently throughout the month, whenever God puts one on our heart, because individual's journey, our story, we need to hear 
We need to hear the testimony of other individuals' lives. We defeat the enemy by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. And then, of course, the third opportunity you have to grow in your beautiful, intimate, spiritual relationship with Christ Jesus is this book study. And it won't be our last book study. It will not be the last book study. This probably will become a staple in um, Just For My Soul Ministries is some type of book study. Those are three opportunities you have to grow. And let me say our monthly sessions, we are on part three of the Holy Spirit. So my brothers and sisters, if you have missed it, no worries. All of this that we have here in the opportunities to grow is on our website at Just For My Soul. It's right there on the screen, .org. These opportunities to grow are also on our YouTube channel and the information's on your screen there, Just For My Soul, Cheryl Oliver, or Just For My Soul, Oliver. And then when it pulls up on your phone or your desktop, there's a playlist. Go into the playlist and these three opportunities are categorized for um, you know, your convenience so you can find things easily. So in those monthly teaching sessions, if you've missed part one and part two of the Holy Spirit, I encourage you, I encourage you to listen. Ah, he took over and he taught both those lessons. I'll tell you that. Amen. Part three, yes, amen, Linda. Part three will be coming the second Saturday of November. Part three of the Holy Spirit will be the second Saturday of November. Um, and also, just for my soul ministries, contact information is on your screen as well. Our email, our phone number, we get text messages, um, prayer requests by email, however you need to get in touch with us. Okay, and I'll, I'll stop right now and just thank you, thank you, thank you for your generous donations to our ministry, um, to God's ministry, just for my soul. We have been able to we have been able to, many of you may have saw the um, interview I did with Chris Noble of The Rose. She's the director of um, communications there and business relations. The Rose is a breast health center. We interviewed her on Thursday night, um, being October, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Just for my soul, ministries have uh, been able to send donations and support women getting their mammograms that cannot afford it, um, being able to head off breast cancer in the early stages. Um, that interview was just very, very informative. I encourage you to go to our Facebook page and, and look at it, share it. Good information. But with your kind donations, we we're able to make donations to the Rose. We are able to feed families, and I mean feed families. Um, people are unemployed. People are ill. People are not able to work. Um, some are even losing their homes. So we're being able to feed families. We've been able to provide face masks. We did a series of picture of everybody with their face mask on. And we're probably going to do another big push out of face mask, hoping uh, that the second set or the third set, I should say, because there's already been two campaigns. The third campaign will have our logo on it. We'll see. Um, that's the least important. Safety is the and health is the first most important thing. We have been able to um, as well support individuals to get this book so that they could be a part of this study. We are also supporting other ministries um, with your donations that, that are taking care of their um, expenses and members and whatever they have going on. And the latest thing we've done is partnered with the Gulf Coast Relief Effort, Just For My Soul Ministries, um, Joy With Jesus Ministries. Minister Jennifer Edwards is one of our panel's guests. She has a discipling prayer ministry. Um, her ministry and Jean's and Jules Ministries, and we are getting much needed supplies to the Louisiana Gulf Coast area. They've been hit by five hurricanes. So if you go to our Facebook page, 
um, those of you who are in our, our private Facebook group, um, Instagram, Twitter, just for my soul, you've seen the flyer. You've seen the address to the drop off location. This will be November the 7th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. If you take by one item, it's helpful. If you take by two items, it's helpful. Um, all things, um, what's needed is on the flyer. What's needed is on the website. All of that information is on the flyer and the times to drop off, but no donation is too small. Your donations to Just For My Soul Ministries will help us contribute greatly to that effort. We will be taking um, a shipment of supplies as well to the drop-off location. So partner with us. We are socially distanced, but we are spiritually close. And there's a ton of things we can do to help others. So I'm always compelled to let you know exactly what your donations are doing um, with Just For My Soul Ministries. So thank you. Thank you. You don't have to give, but you do. And so I, I want to say thank you. All righty. Let us get moving. Okay. Our panelist guests for this morning, you see there, um, many of them, I've already been talking to them, but we do have with us Minister Jennifer Edwards. Um, we have with us uh, Michelle Garcia, we have with us Tennille Simmons, we have Minister Linda Hewlett on the line as well this morning as part of our panel guest, and we're going to get started. I thank my sisters for their sacrifice. You're juggling things, you're trying to get the chapter read, you're trying to live out what you're reading, um, so I, I publicly want to say thank you to these sweet ladies for their sacrifice, not to just for my soul or me, this is their sacrifice for the kingdom and what they truly believe in their hearts. So once again, we got two parts. We're gonna actually go through the chapter and then we're gonna do the call to prayer. Real quick, um, you all have heard me say, I really enjoy the way each chapter starts with this book, okay? the real enemy, fighting the real enemy. Priscilla just kind of puts it out there. And let me just stop and give many, many thanks um, to the Lord and to Priscilla uh, for writing this book and helping us on this journey. Priscilla Schreier, awesome biblical teacher. If I were your enemy, I'd seek to, and got some bullets there on the screen, Remind you of past mistakes and poor choices. And I love this because she just put his strategy out there. You know, he don't have any new tricks. He just used the same stuff over and over and over again on us. And she just puts it right out there. So if we know how he works, that benefits us to keep us from falling into the trap. And sometimes these traps we fall in, we're just so accustomed to them. We don't see them spiritually because we've been dealing with them in our humanity, dealing with them in our flesh. The people around us um, reinforce these traps, remind us of these things. So it takes us to spiritually fight against his tactics and his strategies. Remind us of past mistakes and poor choices. Key word there, mind. That's his battleground. Let me pull up some old stuff and bring it back to their remembrance. And then if you forgot it, let me let somebody bring it up uh -huh. to help them remember. Come on now, who was that? <laughs> yeah. Keep you burdened with shame and guilt. Once the Holy Spirit re reveals to us that is sin and we fall in love with him and we see exactly the damage that thing has done in our soul and the, the ones that love us, then here comes shame and guilt. And God got a whole new trajectory he done put you on. Okay? And we're speaking and recognizing these bullets not because we've um, defeated all of these strategies personally. We know them real well. 
cause you to feel incapacitated. You know, you just can't move, can't go forward. I have a couple of my sisters online with me. There's been times I like, I feel like I'm moving through mud. And they'll just say, sister, let me pray for you. Let, let me, let me pray you through this season. Make you feel like there's no point in trying again. No point in trying again. I want to tell y'all right now, I ain't going to let the whole cat out of the bag, but I'm going to let part of the heads come out in a little tail show. I have a testimony of a woman I met that I am saving for you all. I don't know if we're going to make it to 2021, but I just stood there with my mouth hanging open when she talked to me about overcoming, feeling like she had completely failed. And to hear what she's walking in today, I just say, sweetheart, you've got to tell it. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm not going to tell you her name, when it's coming. I'm just saying, get ready. Because she blew bullet number four right out of the water by the power of God. Bullet number five, to think you have had your chance and you've blown it. You've blown it. Believe that God can forgive others, but not you. Okay. So she's saying, if I was your enemy, this is exactly how I come at you. So if we know this, if we can shine some light on it, to God be the glory, because we know exactly, exactly now how to fight. Think about this. I want you to think about how you act and how you cut up when you know somebody that's just right out done lied. Okay. <laughs> how you act and how you cut up when you know somebody that's just right out lied. Those of you who are uh, aunties, uncles, mamas, daddies, what happened last night? Well, 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 well. Now tell me again what happened last night. <laughs> yes. And why you act what? like that? Why do you act like that? Because you know the truth. Mm -hmm. Come on, Shell. Why you act yeah. like that? <laughs> I mean, and you be strong with them too. <laughs> yeah. Because you know the truth. Yes. Now tell me that story one more time. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Let no, let <laughs> no, deep and deeper. <laughs> it was about ten forty-five. Now what happened? <laughs> I'm laughing, y'all, but that's exactly how we need to do the enemy. Yeah, yeah. Say what, fool? What you say? Do you know who you? Do you know who I am? Do you know who you lying to? Mm. Yeah. That just kind of went through yeah. me right there. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> do, do you know what we're going to go in here and pray for? Why you come lying? You'll get to the point that when he starts coming in, especially when you know you and God been working it out. Hmm. You and, God been, and you and you rolling. God has you in the midst of some kingdom work and here he come. You'll get to the point that you start laughing when he shows up because you'll know something about to go down because you done showed your ugly face. Right. Something about to happen because you done showed your ugly face and you can get what you can get with a mentor or a sister in Christ and say, let me tell you what happened so you can start praying. But this finna mm -hmm. get good because this food done showed up. Mm -hmm. You can start laughing at him. Because there was a time when all of these bullets caused my knees to buckle. Oh, Lord Jesus. Amen. And if I listened to them, I promise you, there would be no just for my soul. My God. My and God. I will say to you, he has not stopped trying. My God. So myself and every panel guest today, it is a fight to yeah. come to you and be this real. Yeah. 
it's a fight to come to you and get our minds straight to say that's not who we are now, but that is who I used to be. Yeah. That's not the battle I'm fighting today, but I did fight that battle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to God be the glory. Let me move on because, you know, I didn't, I start taking shirts and robes and stuff off and sweaters because you get hot. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Come on in here with us. I see you, Miss Kimberly, Miss Rose, Miss Judy, Tish. Good morning and welcome. Miss Betty. Good morning and welcome to you. Yes, Monique. Happy birthday to you. Happy belated birthday to you. Come on in here, ladies. Brothers, join in. You got a pass too. We're talking about pass this morning. Amen. Who for thought before we get rolling? Who for thought before we get rolling? Oh, Jesus. All right. I want to read to you Revelations 12 and 10. And you know, Reverend, I will always tell you, get your pencil and paper because we, we cuts up. You got to have weaponry to go back to. Food for thought. Revelations 12 and 10 states, Then I heard a voice in heaven say, and I'll preface in my study, um, this voice is um, identified as a person in heaven, not God, not Jesus, uh, maybe an angel, um, but we're thinking more of a saint. I heard a loud voice in heaven say, now have come the salvation, underline that, and the power, underline that, and the kingdom of our God. <laughs> now have come the salvation, the power, and the kingdom of our God. And the authority of his Messiah. Okay. So this person is speaking of God and of Christ. Or the accuser of the brethren and the sisters, the brothers and the sisters, the accuser, whenever scripture gives the Holy Spirit, God, Christ, or the enemy a name, a specific name, make note of it. Here the enemy is called the accuser of the brothers and the sisters, who accuses them before God day and night has been curled down. Mm. Okay. Out of all the ugly tricks, lies, deceptions, and games of the enemy, we're now at the end. And the only word you could call this fool <laughs> they chose was the accuser. Mm -hmm. We could say the liar, the deceiver, the cheater, the, the um, one who planned evil, the evil one. No, the accuser. Okay? So rock with me here. If you've come to Just For My Soul and you've attended a monthly session, you've seen the picture, the visual picture of the soul. Okay? The attribute of accusation is so debilitating to the mind and the soul man of a Christian. I chose this scripture at the end when he's hurled down, completely defeated. He was, the, the, the title they chose was the accuser. So that attribute, that game, that strategy of Satan is extremely effective if we don't fight. The daunting accusation against the brothers and the sisters before God, day and night. Ooh, 
Something just rose up in me right there. Day and night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get the picture of a courtroom. The judge is sitting there. And he just, he just, he just got, he won't even shut up day and night. They did this, they did this, they did. Did you remember when they was 15? They did this, they did this. Did you and all yeah. of that stuff, God, Come is on, not in your man. word. You know, they're supposed to be obeying you, right? And they did this and they lied and they did this and they ain't forgave that one and they still sleeping with this one. Day and night. And and why it it it's it's kind of uh, petrifying and penetrating to us and debilitating to us because half of the time he ain't lying. Right. right. He ain't lying. Now he's a liar. I'm we're gonna talk about what he lies about, but the accusations most of the time is dead on. Amen. It's dead on. But I want you to look at, at how he accuses day and night constantly. How much time do we spend saying back to him, did you forget who I am? <laughs> ah, did you forget who covers me? Did you forget fool whose blood is stained on me? Did you forget he already died so your accusations of no power? My God. Let me agree with you. Yes, I did it. But did you forget I repented? Mm. Did you forget I was saved? Did you forget that he said in 1 John 1 and 9, if I confess, he is faithful to cleanse Clean me, purify me of all unrighteousness. Did you forget that scripture, accuser? And you have the power to shut his mouth. Yeah. My God. After a while, Job just kept worshiping God, saying to God, God give it, God take it away. He tore his robes, he worshiped God. After a while, you don't even it's, you don't even hear any more of the attacks. He came and and riddled his body with with wounds and and took all of his livelihood, his stock, the animals, the kids, the everybody. We, we, you know, maybe the wife left him. We just don't know. But Job stayed positioned in who he was. Okay. Now, some dark days came for Job, but Job understood in God to worship him, to cry out to him, to understand he gives and he takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's what Job said. So as powerful as this scripture is, and we see, we see that he will be hurled down. Let's look at the next set of scriptures that we need to be telling ourselves because this is a done deal for us. But the accuser will use that tactic because he know we don't fight. We, we, we weak fighters. Okay. He know he can buckle us at the knees. He know guilt and shame is effective for us. If we let it. Mm if we let it. And I'm so passionate about this because there's probably not a week that I don't get ready to go live. And he was like, he'd be like, really? For real? Girl, only if they knew. Wow. what you say? Come on. Mm. It's not a week. Wow. Yes, Lord. But I find the strength because I know who I am. Yes. Come on. That's it. I find the strength because I need you to know who you are. My, my. It's not a week. It's not a prayer study. It's not anything that he doesn't say if they knew. Mm, my, my. So let's look at these next scriptures. And it says here. <laughs> They triumphed over him 
by the blood of the lamb Mm -hmm. and the word of their testimony. Now it's the next scripture and I separated them because I needed us to see how we're positioned in this. Mm -hmm. Miss Linda and Miss Michelle been rocking with me for a long time and we used to do this grief class and it it literally always ended up in tears but there was something we used to teach one day your testimony will not be quicksand it'll be a trampoline amen okay one day there won't be you'll be able to tell your story And there'll be tears, not of shame, not of guilt, not of disbelief, but of joy. Mm -hmm. Yes. (laughs) There'll be a power, because sometimes we scared to tell it, because we're looking in other people's eyes and we know they're judging us. Oh my God, you, oh girl, you did what? Mm, You nasty. Come on, Rare. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you'll be able to say it Mm-hmm. And don't care how they feel about it. Because get what? You nasty too. You just mm. told it. My God. Ooh, Either a nasty gossiper, a nasty liar. Mm. You nasty too. But I just don't care how you feel about me no more. Amen. Amen. That's when your testimony becomes a trampoline. And who does it blow up? It blows up God. It gives God the glory. But some of the most judgmental people or some of the most filthy people, don't ever forget that. Don't ever forget that. And don't let any man, woman, or child make you feel bad about the past that you've given to God and you've asked him for the strength to come out of and some fleshly human mm. got the audacity to try to keep you in it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Big word. All right. So your testimony, it is a trampoline. Stop allowing it to be quicksand because that's when you agree with the enemy's accusations and not with the word of God. So how do we defeat this lying accuser? How do we defeat it? And this scripture is why Just For My Soul Ministries has always incorporated testimony. And let me say this, every lady on here has spoken at our in-person meetings. And I would tell them for months later, people would say to me, "You, you know that lady that talked about losing her baby? You know that lady that talked about being divorced? You know that, 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 and I'm talking men and women. You know that dude that talked about where he just thought he could find more strength smoking weed? You see, we don't have no play testimonies. We have real testimonies. We don't need no play help. We need power for help. Mm. My God. And for days after these testimonies, weeks after these testimonies, I would go back and tell the person who spoke, you impacted so-and-so's life. Mm -hmm. Because they still talking about you today. So we defeat him two ways, the blood of the lamb and the blood of the lamb gives you a testimony. Thank you, God. So it is not why God did I have to go through this? I made these decisions. This happens to be my family. This happens to be my life. When you switch your perspective from why to what, what do I do now? He'll say, take it and give me glory with it. That's right. That's right. The lot that was allotted to your life, quit despising it. Mm. Wow. Wow. The lot that was allowed it to your life, quit despising it. My, my. I want a husband like this. I want a wife like this. I want a job like this. I want kids like this. I want a life like this. I want a body like this. I want to be known like this. He said, quit despising what I gave you. Mm-hmm. 
and jump off of it like a trampoline. We defeat him by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. Therefore, he is able to save completely, highlight that, those who come to God through him, and him is Christ. Thank you, God. Therefore, he is able to save, not halfway, not part of the way, completely, because he always lived to intercede for them. Now, how is this scripture powerful to the fight? Y'all, you take Hebrews 7 and 25 and put it up on your bathroom mirror. Because while he's standing there, the accuser, the one who saves you completely, praying. Hmm. Hallelujah. Yes. It ain't my little weak prayers. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't shells and Linda's little weak Jesus is interceding. Come on. Because he knows it's heavy. Thank you, God. He knows it hurts. Thank you, God. He knows it's dark. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. He knows it was dirty and nasty. Thank you, God. He knows it's debilitating. My God. And he shields you with his prayers. Oh, and say, walk on, baby, because I got you covered. Oh, Lord Jesus. Mm. Thank you, God. Mm. I'm interceding for you always. Oh, yeah. He accusing you day and night. But I'm interceding for you always. Hallelujah. I used to say to Michelle early on in prayer, I'm just praying for people. I'm just praying for people. I'm tired of praying for people. My attitude got bad because it felt like wasn't nobody praying for me. Until I rolled up on Hebrews 7 and 25. Y'all ain't got to ever pray for me. That's right. That's right. Because the one who was able to save me completely and don't 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 get it twisted. Who come to God through Him, through Jesus Christ being your Lord and Savior, because He's always He lives to intercede Hallelujah. for them. Ooh, that's a good word. Ha! How about that? Hallelujah. You ain't gotta have nobody pray for you. Just say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Because I know you interceding right now for my strength, and I receive it. Amen. I have to bring it back to my remembrance what you're doing. I have to bring it back to my, I got to speak it with my mouth. I got to wake up. That's why we got to put this stuff on paper because I, we forget. You put that scripture on the paper and start your day. Now, this next scripture, my dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. You know, you know, you, you tore up like I am. This, this become one of your favorite scriptures. Like my dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody do, hmm. my God. Yeah. Because I know you're fleshly. I know your humanity. I know you twisted. I know you've been hurt. I know you everything. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. Thank you, God. So not if. Yeah. It's almost guaranteed you will sin. Amen. Mm-hmm. And it's, and it's, you're born in sin. You're shaped into iniquity. Adam and Eve have sealed that thing for us. Amen. So when you do, instead of him coming in 
Oh my God. Oh my God. She broke the rules. Oh my God. Oh my God. Da, 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 da. Yeah, Satan, I did. And I feel bad. And it's probably going to cost me because don't get it twisted. Consequences are not always taken away. But forgiveness is always yours. Yes. Yes. But if anybody does, we have an advocate. Those of you in healthcare, a lot of my my ladies in the healthcare uh, online or in healthcare or in some type of profession where you're, you're a middle person, you're fighting for something else. You know what an advocate is. You can have weak advocates. You can have strong advocates. Okay. We got a bull for an advocate. Mm. Amen. Amen. We got a lion for an advocate. Thank you, God. We got an ego for an advocate. Hallelujah. We got the righteous one as an advocate. So when you start, if you just take these three scriptures, you ain't even got to know a bunch of Bible. You take these three when guilt and shame come in, you will shut the enemy right on down. Okay. What he may be saying about you is true. But to use it against you after you've been forgiven is manipulation yeah. and deception. Yes, it is. That's good. That's good. So you got to pull out your spiritual weapons and say, have you forgotten the testimony you're trying to make me shame of? Revelations in 12 and 11 tells me it defeats you. Hebrews 7 and 25 tells me that Jesus himself always lives to intercede. And 1 John 1 and 2 understands, yeah, I did it. But I have an advocate with the Father that happens to be the righteous one and your raggedy butt is not. Mm. So I'm going to get up out this bed and I'm going to move forward. Doing. my god that was good Brad. yeah that's a, we all got a pass yeah we all got a pass some of the most pretentious people at the church house and we should be the most understanding because everybody in there raggedy yeah include me Amen. the most understanding the ones ready to reach out with arms of redemption. Everybody in there is still struggling with something that's keeping them at the foot of Christ. So they ought to understand your struggle. Amen. To God be the glory. Let me push on. Good morning, Miss Ruthie. Thank you, Miss Nina, for joining us. Miss Wanda, thank you for joining us. Yes. Y'all say something to us. Talk back to us. Red Marla will kind of be strong sometime, but I guarantee you, as long as I'm in the word, I ain't wrong. All right, ladybugs. Past, present, and purpose. In our book, we just have two slides today. We're not, we're not going to be long, long, long. Sometimes we'd be on here about two hours. Um, pages 94 to 96, 94 to 96, we'll talk about the first top of the slide. I'll let the panelists have at it, and let me just read, read, read that to you. Um, and the first part of the slide says, uh, why would reminding you of your past benefit the enemy so much? We will just learn in Revelations, that's the name they gave him at the end, the accuser. Why is that so, um, why is that one of his most powerful weapons? Lady, ladies, speak to me. Well, I'll, I'll go first, um, Reverend Oliver, to say, because if he can keep us bound, in the sins of our past and who we used to be, whatever 
move we make in the direction for what God has for us to do, that guilt and shame will come back and weigh us down. So he knows it may not be anything from stealing a back of gum or, or, or having an abortion. He going he to look at our playbook and decide, oh, what made her turn around when I reminded her of this? Or what made her go back and just smoke crack because I reminded her of this? So it's almost like he, he got our number. He knows exactly what causes us to, to stumble and fall. Michelle, can be, you jump out of this chair and run down 59. <laughs> Keep talking. And I, this is 59. That's what the author was saying when she got to talking about being driving down 59 and, and, and certain things start coming back. Oh, we all do that. Ooh, I can't turn down this street. Because I remember when, and as long as he can replay that, yeah. He gonna hinder our purpose. Yep. Now, Michelle, I'm a I'm a poke at you because I know I can. Mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> yes, baby girl. <laughs> you ain't gotta give us no details. Mm -hmm. But I need to know where you standing today, and what could have caused you not to be where you are today. Not, not, not any details of, but more or less, what did he try to keep you paralyzed? My but shame. You, you My pushed, sh you pushed. Mm -hmm. and there are some people now today seeing God because you pushed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Reverend, I'm going speak more, more so I felt everything she said in this from a, from a divorce, from a loss of a job for people what people would say about me like I was a failure. And matter of fact, I told this testimony to somebody last night. I can remember the moment and time I surrendered it all to him. I, from the, where I was, what the weather was like, I remember Every time something would come up, it would rip that scab off and I would try to go back. Oh, this, this makes me feel good right here, right here, right here. And one night he went, enough. I am all you need. You do not need to go back to that place. And I ain't going to keep coming to get you out of that place if that's where you want to be, if you like this feeling. And one night I went, I'm giving it all to him. And just because that one thing was keeping me bound, I wouldn't have been prepared for what I was going, what I'm having to go through now if I'd have kept letting that thing back there hold me. My it God. took fasting, praying, not just for me, from, from my sisters to just, okay, come on, hold on, don't give up, don't give up, don't go back, don't look back. I would not be able to survive what I have right now without him. Without him. I, you know, I already know we, we finna get cut up in here because I want somebody else to speak after Michelle, but she's been a little modest, so I'm just gonna go on and put it out there. Now, if she'd have got stuck, stuck, yeah. okay, today, mm -hmm. this girl praying with and for physicians, Mm -hmm. She's teaching in churches. Wow. She's taking people off the doorstep of grief and suicide. My God. My God. So I'm not blowing her up. I'm blowing God up. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I'm blowing up her mm -hmm. friend not to stay stuck. Mm. Her mm. baby pray like they finna tear Jesus and all the angels down and bring them to earth. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Because she Thank didn't stay Lord. stuck. Mm. Doctor stopping by her desk saying, I see something on you. You got a word for me? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. My God. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And her journey was meant to take her out. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. You don't know the loss that she's had. Thank you, Lord. 
Absolutely. But she would not let go of his hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Yeah. Trial after Thank trial, you. hurt after hurt, disappointment after disappointment. Thank you, Lord. But she said, I know God is. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But if we stay stuck in, what's for me? What's for me? You was created for his glory. Ain't none of this for you. You alive. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. And if you get on his journey, you do his work, he going to take care of everything around you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Her babies crawl up in the bed with her and called her blessed. Thank you, Lord. Because she on the field for somebody else. God got them. My God. Hallelujah. My God. One in the middle of a of a of a of a a, a random shooter. He don't get shot. My God. My God. Pulled over by the police, but they okay. Thank Corona you. weed and everything else, but they okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. No, I ain't blowing her up because she ain't nobody. We blowing Jesus up. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Is that three, four, five o'clock a.m.? Get up and pray. No, you ain't getting what you want because you will let go of me if I make you comfortable. Thank you, Lord. Yes, mm. Lord. Yes, Thank Lord. you, Lord. And to this day, ends a meeting, but she's still in a struggle. Thank you, Lord. And she had to go get four, five computers and and try, just get into the study today. Hallelujah. 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 And everything about her past. My God. She'd have clipped her at the knees. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. She'd have got to heaven and God said it was a whole bunch of people depending on you. I had to back. Why didn't you believe me? But that will not be her story. Amen. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. Will be Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, I know it was hard. Yeah, I know I didn't give you everything you wanted. Yeah, I know I didn't feel all your dreams and desires. But Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got a crown waiting for you in glory. God. My God, thank you. Because you endured. Thank yes, you. Lord. Because you suffered and you still called my name. Thank you, Lord. Because Hallelujah. you believed me and I Hallelujah. always came to see about you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm. I'll say this and I'll move on so my other sisters can speak on this, this slide. And, and with Shell and her, and she said, you know, my babies, you she went through a divorce. My babies need a man in their life. The God that brought them boys kings. Yes, he did. Hallelujah. Yes, he did. The people <laughs> that God have brought in those boys' life yes. to establish them, to teach them, to guide them. And God mm. forgive me, I ain't speaking bad about your ex, but you wanted to come from <coughs> one who ain't studying God. And he's trying to send them 10, 15. Hallelujah. And love God. Yes. My God. Mm. So sometimes I'm away. We need to let it go because God got a whole another better way. Shell, I love you. I didn't mean to put you out there like that. Mm. You, I, I, I had to press mute because I was about to holler. Because <laughs> see, we forget. Praise God. Praise God. We forget. Right. Mm -hmm. But when yes. you travel with your sister, you have to remind her sometime of who she is. Oh my God. Okay. Mm. All right. I'm, I'm going to calm down. Y'all going to talk a little bit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You you made some uh, very valid points, and this analogy while reading this actually came to me um, on page ninety eight. Uh, but I, I'll jump in, I'll jump the gun and share it now. Um, 
just talking about your level of bondage and where your mindset is and where Satan tries to keep you, but where do you hold yourself in your situations? Are you actively committing the crime? Are you in jail because you committed the crime and now you don't have access to commit the crime? Are you out in the halfway house on parole where now your mobility is limited or are you in full part and living in freedom? Mm. Are you able to, are you able to move about and still come across that thing that caused the guilt and shame and still don't go to it? Mm. So Satan tries to use your state of mind and influence you because Mm. if I'm in jail and don't have access to it the minute I get out, am I going to go commit that crime? Am I going to go back to that thing? Am I going to get off that exit? And I think 59 hits so hard for us because we live in Houston, but then she comes back and she say, pick your highway. Yes. Was it Route 99? Yeah. Was it I-10? What road were you walking down? But where are you walking and keeping yourself in bondage? Yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. And so yes. Satan uses those things to, to truly. I mean, the shame and the embarrassment and the thing that kept coming back to me was no condemnation. Yeah. No condemnation. Where are you going to choose to walk? No condemnation. Yeah. Yeah. To Reverend me, Oliver, I to piggyback on what Reverend Tanel was saying, we forget. And I remember calling Reverend Oliver and said, "Have you ever heard the saying that go?" Sometimes saints can be so earthly minded to a day, no heavenly good. Huh. We forget that we're so caught up in, oh Lord, you're going to do it for us. Yeah, we remember that the devil is real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I th- we, sometimes we can minister to people even within ourselves and we forget. Well, the devil, he rewards his minions as well. That's right. So like she was saying, by 59, yeah, we, I can get on the phone with Linda and go, girl, you remember when? We can't do that every day. Because the fact that I, I acknowledged it, the devil know, oh, wait a minute, she still, she still got that. It may be That's right. buried, That's right. but if I do something, it'll bring it back up. That's right. I can pull that chain again. Then, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And to Neil, that, that whole... <laughs> Is she on? Is she on parole? Is she in the halfway house? <laughs> you make things so real to me. <laughs> I tell I'm a little OCD, y'all. I, I'm, I, my mind is so visual, and I just like I can literally take a test and see the book. And so for me, I have to connect. And when God was like, God knows I, I've never been to jail and I certainly don't want to be on a halfway house, but he brought a, a patient of mine to me this week who was out on parole. And he kept complaining about, I'm out on parole, but everybody keep controlling my movement. I can't get my wheelchair. And I was like, well, how long are you on parole for life? And I thought, oh, he, his his movement and the choices that he wants to make are so limited mm-hmm. by something that he did in his past. Will he ever have true freedom? So if we keep ourselves in the halfway house, girl, will we ever have true freedom? Right, right. Because, Lord. Trying, because he's trying to move instead of letting God move. That's it. That's he's it. Trying to move. Yeah. Oh God. My God, Miss Linda, Miss Jennifer, because I, I I just ain't got nothing else to say. Um, for me, um, I, I mean, I could do a a panor- I mean, just this chapter was more like a for me a panoramic view of my life. Not everything exact, but very close and similar from me being a child who uh, ran for her life being raped at a very young age um, to experiencing in my young adult uh, losing four members um, within months and maybe the, the maximum a year 
uh, chronologically. And then one of those being my son, my four-year-old son drowning. So for me, when I look back, um, the enemy had my mind. And as we all know, that is his home. That is his dwelling place. And it's a home for him if we open the door and let him in. And I was that person who did do that. And for many years, I lived in shame of being uh, raped. Um, when that happened to me throughout my, throughout my life, I, did, I never thought I was good enough. And so I never thought I was pretty enough. I never th saw the beauty in myself. And so I chose my relationships according to that. And so you can already imagine, I ran into some very ugly, ugly, ugly frogs. And I'm talking about inner. So the enemy held me bound thinking that I was not good enough. And then when I lost my son, the, the, tragic, uh, the tragedy impacted me so hard till the way that I wanted to react I couldn't. It was something that had a hold of me. And at the time, I know it was not the enemy, but I didn't know really that it was God because the enemy wanted me to go to jail or prison for murder, but it didn't happen that way. So for me, the enemy personally has held me bound with my past all in my mind. And so when I made that choice to put him behind me, stump on his head, cut him off with the heavenly sword, I changed my mindset. Even when I accepted Christ, there were some things that I really struggled with that I didn't think I could be delivered from but it was all about me changing my mind. Even today, and he still attacks, I have to get my mind stead on God, keep it stead on him. And the word says he gives us perfect peace. So it, that's, that's what I can say about dealing with my past, coming from it, and coming to God's glory. It was all just a mindset, a change of the mindset. So. <laughs> and I, you know, um, oh, Linda, I, I, I appreciate you. I appreciate that. Um, for Linda to give you the foundation um, that attempted the foundation that attempted to shape her life. You hear me say attempted to shape her life. This lady, this lady and the strength that she has and the authenticity and the sincerity of her prayers. And she said to me, she said, Reverend Oliver, I will not be bound. Fear will not paralyze me. It has tried all my life. So she's being modest. When I speak of just for my soul, don't ever think, don't ever think that there, this is, this is all on me because there are days that she will call me and her prayers prepare me for you. Amen. If she would have fell in the quicksand of the past that she just described to you, there are individuals on her job. See these jobs got you on and you complaining about, those are fields. There's women and people on her job. Linda, will you pray for me? 
Linda, will you come see about my family? Sometimes I call her for prayer. She's like, girl, I, I have to call you back because I got other people I need to talk to. She came and said, Cheryl, there's something on my life and I need to stand before the people of God and I got to walk in it. This ministry in me, it ain't for the four walls. It's for the world. Do you know the enemy did not ever want her to say that? What's inside of me can't stay in the four walls. It's for the world. And right now, she is in school studying the word of God. The enemy wanted to clip her at the knees and keep her there. Because now she understands her life was not quicksand, but a trampoline. Amen. Thank you, God. Yeah. What he attempted. And you know, sometimes there's a portion of us in our immaturity in Christ. Why God let this happen? Why God let this happen? Why God let this happen? Okay. Check it. And this is the only thing that I can kind of help you see. When you look at people at the top of their game, and I speak about athletes all the time because I'm in a household full of them. You don't get there without the, the, the fortitude, the structure. Uh, Michelle know what I'm talking about. Both her baby got bad knees, but they champions. One got a ring. With any price being paid, with any practice, with any struggle, with your whole body being transformed and the muscular structure. Amen. Or, or uh, a testimony of mine, um, probably having an undiagnosed learning disability, you on degree number five. And Linda got to pray me through every paper. Praise God. Okay, so when you say, why God let this happen? Why God let this happen? Y'all help me now, so you won't be no little old punk in life. Amen, amen. He got to give you something to grow your muscles. He got to put you in a situation to give you strength. He has to bring some circumstances so you can see who he really is. He got to put you in a, in a situation where what comes out of you reeks of him. My God. And that's not going to happen by him keeping everything from you. He got to add weight to your life. He got to take off the 10 pounds and put on the 25, take off the 25, put on the 45. None of us want the work, but everybody wants the results. So we have to stop whining about our lane, our lot, our life. How can I use this? To overcome because the overcomer lives in me. The, okay, the enemy don't mind you being saved. Yes. What he don't want you to be is strong and powerful. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Be on a team, but I need you to stay on the bench. Yeah. And Jesus, the coach saying, come off that bench and give me 50 laps. Amen. Mm. Every time you run, it's a different part of your story. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you want to be a star in the game? Mm. Yeah, so you don't hate because you don't know nobody's story. You don't know why they preach and cry and spit and run and jump and holler. You can't take the hell they've been through. My God. My God. I'm going to speak a word. My God. You can't take the hell they've been through. Mm. Mm. And if it ain't speaking to you, click off the channel. <laughs> Keep scrolling if it ain't speaking to you. Keep scrolling. Mm. Because it's true. It's true. To be on this team. Oh, Lord Jesus. Come on, real. It takes a workout. Yeah. Yeah. And when he you get to heaven he said you endured you stayed at practice 
Some games you won, some games you lost. You mm. always rooted for the team. You kept the faith. Yes, yes. Mm. What soldier mm. do you know that's gone through combat training, get on the front line and punk out? He can't. She can't. And that's where you get the stripes and the medals and the accommodation. But then when it comes to the things of the spirit and when it comes to being strong in life, we wants to be weak and whiny and I won't go through nothing. And why? But they got all this and they doing all this. Who they supposed to be? Stop. Michelle and Linda them put it out there. You don't have their story, but you got a story. And what does God want to do with it? Use it for his glory. And maybe, and maybe, and maybe, and I'll back up and say this. A lot of this sounds impossible. A lot of this sounds irrational. A lot of this sounds like that's not my desire to do the will of the Lord. I'm just being real with you. Because before you get to the part that you hear these ladies walking in and surviving in, you got to first fall in love with him. That's right. That's right. You got to fall in love with him. Can't surrender to, to someone you're not in love with. You better mm. Amen. 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 Michelle say, I remember the day, the hour, the temperature outside, what the sun looked like when I said, God, take it all. Amen. Amen. Take it all. Mm. And check it out. We want him to keep us from everything, but sometimes he got to get a, let us get in the ditch so we can call on him. Mm. That's it. That's it. The author of this book, he had to let Priscilla get in the ditch. Yeah, I know who your daddy is, but you're going to go through this. So we can call on him. We can appreciate him. And like Shell say, I ain't trying to go back there no more. That's right. And like Linda say, I had to stop messing with them frogs. I had to go look for a king. Amen. Amen. So he got to let you taste it. Y'all that's raising kids, you know what I'm talking about. Don't touch the stove, it's hot. Don't touch the stove, it's hot. Fine, go on over there and touch it. Because <laughs> until you respect me and see me as somebody who really loves you and trying to, you ain't going to do nothing I say. That's right. My God. Oh, Jesus. Wow. So let's not jump into religious do's and don'ts and do's and don'ts and do's and don'ts and do's and don'ts. Let's just preach love. Yeah. Because mm. yeah. you fall in love with him. You and the Holy Spirit going to work out the do's and don'ts. Ain't nobody pull me out the trash can but the Holy Ghost. Amen. But the Holy Spirit. Uh, not mamas and grandmamas do's and don'ts and the church do's and don'ts. It was when that thing hit me and I was like, ooh. Oh. And you say pull out the trash can. The trash can. Mm. My God. <laughs> My God. Mm. The trash can. Thank you, God. Reverend Oliver, we have to remember too, like I had my son to tell me, mama, I'm bringing a friend home. And this a couple of days ago, because I told him his mama died from cancer, but I told him, you can come by my house because my mama liked to pray for people. And I said, wait a minute. <laughs> maybe, maybe you misunderstood. And I think a lot of us misunderstand. My prayer is not going to get you into heaven. Mm -hmm. you, we all need to know when, when she's talking about us surrendering to God, not going back to that place. We got, when we pray, we store up those prayers. Yes. I can say, Lord, I want all of my family to go to heaven. But if you don't want it. Come on. And if you ain't putting in the work. Oh, yes, how yes. you, as I say, so when, when your little friend come in, I guess we're going we gonna to pray as a unit. Yep. Yeah. Because my mama's prayers helped me along. I, I know, look, I know back, back then I was, you know, skating on the prayers of grandmama before, and mama before I got here. Amen. Now, I may not have been in the trash can, but I was somewhere, you know, some other places I wasn't supposed to be. Oh, yeah. Amen. 
Amen. Any other comments? I Any? think the author also ties it up, um, talking about our circumstances. At the bottom of page 94, she says, try to take Satan's attacks almost as constructive circumstances where we might actually be able to learn from the mistakes that we've made and see another option that we could have taken to avoid what ultimately happened. And she moves on to page 95. In order to not be so rash next time, we might be able to teach from it, help steer others who might one day face the same set of choices. And that is just so powerful in exactly um, what you all um, said. Like Michelle said, she may not have been in the trash can, maybe worse, maybe better. And everybody, you know, we don't, I, I don't want to lose people who feel like, oh, my testimony or my life, my past wasn't that bad, but you made a mistake. Yeah. You went, went down the wrong road. You did something that somebody else could learn mm. from by going different, by hearing your testimony. My mm. testimony isn't dire. I didn't, I, I didn't have one parent in the home, but my daughter's growing up with one parent in the home. I still had to learn and watch my mom, who my parents are still married, I still had to learn and watch her be a wife. My dad traveled a lot, you know, and so there are things that you can learn in every stage of a testimony mm -hmm. that someone else has gone through. I struggled in college, you know. I ended up having my daughter while I was still in college, but mm -hmm. Someone years ago, she said to me, and it was an adult, and I was graduating with my second degree, and she said, I've watched you from high school to college. I watched how you got married, had your child, got divorced, and yet you still continue to press on. And so we're living our lives in testimony, and we never know who's paying attention, who's seeing our struggle, and who could benefit from the things yes. that we went through. And it doesn't have to be a dire situation, but watching somebody progress in their strength and in their growth. My sister passed away last year, and my daughter struggled with that concept because I think my sister was more of her favorite person than I was, but <laughs> but she struggle I saw her struggle later um mm. as time went on and I kept saying well what's wrong what's wrong and my daughter came back and she said I just wanted to be strong like you and I thought whoa mm. baby my strength didn't happen overnight mm. and there are days and nights that you didn't see me cry mm. you didn't see me struggle to get dressed and in my drive, my drive to put everything together for her funeral and put things in place and keep people together was only me keeping myself from being able to feel and keeping myself and put things in order. I told you guys before I'm a little OCD, but putting things in order and pressing forward is how I, it, it's how I understand and make things happen. But that doesn't mean that's where my strength comes from. And so I had to sit back and share with her my struggles so that she could see how I'm able to push forward. Because there was nobody but the Lord that got me through that day and here today. And so it's so important that even when we think that our testimony is up but the little, mm -hmm. that testimony can be so powerful it for is. somebody else. It's still yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 On the slide here, it says a divine perspective. And that's what Tanil was referring to. Learn from it. Gain wisdom, gain wisdom for next time. Will there be a next time? Yes. Because like um, Michelle said, the enemy got your number. He has your ticket. He knows your weakness. He's going to use the things that debilitate you the most. But if you gain wisdom the next time, you can say, fool, move around. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I know what that feels like when it's over. Mm -hmm. I know that that little comfort is not going to be everlasting. Yeah. And then I know the guilt and the shame you want to use against me because you did it the last time I did it. 
So you gain wisdom for the next time. You stop making the same mistake over and over. And my, my sisters and brothers, a part of God's grace, and I don't know if you may have even heard it like this, a part of God's grace allow you to get to the point that you start to hate it. Amen. <laughs> because amen, like we amen, still amen. see it. Amen. Here, I'll pray with you, but I'm not going to pray cancer off your mama. You're going to have to pray too. Amen. Amen. So you're going to, you, you do something or you struggle with something or you, you, you um, need help in an area and it's not just instantaneously going to fall off. A part of his grace is letting you get to the point that you just know you need him and you don't ever want to do it again. Hmm. So you gain wisdom for the next time. Teach from it. Help somebody else. That's what we're doing today. Mm-hmm. We're teaching from our pain. Tanil is teaching from her grief. Michelle is teaching from her struggle. Linda's teaching from her bondage. I'm teaching from my craziness. <laughs> I don't even know what else to call it. Okay? Amen. Really needs a diagnosis. Bullet number three. God is too, Facebook. Okay? Allow <laughs> fervent strategic prayer to shield you from the lies of the enemy. Amen. Thank you, God. That was our introductory slide. Mm -hmm. Strategic, fervent. You get one scripture that speaks to your fight. Strategic, Lord, help me, Lord, help me. Lord, help me is a great prayer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when you strategically add word, add your name, add your weakness. My God. It blows him out of the water. Last bullet, here's divine, a divine perspective. Realize what God has done for you. That's all we did in that first slide when I got all strong. Realize what God has done for you. Rehearse it. Rehearse it. Because remember, the enemy is accusing you day and night. Mm-hmm. Rehearse what he's done for you. And last but not least, this is another term that sometimes you have to actually realize this is what you're doing. You're frustrating grace and mercy. Mm. You're frustrating grace and mercy. You're frustrating grace and mercy. Mm. I so wanted to make these deadlines in school and I'm praying and Ms. Linda praying and Ms. Jennifer praying and I'm, Oh, I got to do it by this day. I got to do it by this day. I got to do it by this day. And so I called an instructor and you know, and I had work and COVID and um, family and um, of course, JMS. And I didn't make that deadline. My instructor called and gave me extensions and I'm thinking a week or two. How you get a 90 day extension? Wow. You get a whole extra three months. Grace and mercy. Grace and mercy. Amen. But I was frustrating it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wasn't taking a deep breath and said, God, you know, you know, I get home, I have nothing left. Yeah. And then to get the brain power to type at a master's level on a, on a research paper, I read, right. For real. And to take a deep breath and to not frustrate his grace. And, and I don't know what example you can use for yourself, but you just may be chomping at the bit for about something and he's already taken care of it. Wow. A divine perspective learn from it, gain wisdom for next time, teach from it, help somebody else, allow fervent strategic prayer to shield you, a divine perspective, realize what God has done, rehearse it, and stop frustrating his grace and mercy. Now you cannot lie in his grace and mercy as an excuse to continue foolishness, but allow that grace and mercy is there to help you in the midst of it and don't frustrate his grace and mercy because you're trying to be perfect. You're trying to meet your own standard and goals. Sometimes it's there to also keep you humble. 
Amen. Huh. Amen. Oh God, I said I'd never do that again and I done did it again. I'm going to tell you something as a counselor. It's a lot I have to go through so that when I'm talking, your word, what you're saying will hit me. And all I can do is say, I remember when. Hmm. And I can empathize with that feeling, maybe different circumstances, but I've never, if I've never felt it, hmm. I can sit back like this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but when I completely understand, I just kind of lean forward and be like, all right, keep talking. Because I felt it. Jesus has come. He's been here in flesh and blood. He's felt our struggle. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. He's felt the conflict. He's been intimately acquainted with it. So sometimes grace and mercy has us and we don't get it perfect the way we wanted to do it. And I never, but grace, I'm going to read every day, Lord. And you end up reading one day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But that one scripture you read, you ended up ministering to somebody. Oh my God. And they say, I'm having the hardest time. I'm having the hardest time getting to my word immediately. I know exactly how you feel. <laughs> Amen. Immediately. Baby, I know exactly how you feel, but if you just read one scripture, why can you say that to them with empathy and compassion? Yes. Because you was just struggling the same week. Amen, Rev. Amen. So don't frustrate his grace and his mercy that he's a lot he allows to cover us. It'll keep us humble. It'll help, it'll help us with empathy and compassion. It'll help us not become judgmental and pompous amen all right my sisters this is our last slide minister edwards you show quiet over there amen mm -hmm. I, I mean let the church say amen uh, uh, <laughs> I, I quickly because I, I can't add too much or I'll be repeating exactly what everyone else has said, but the, the question that you had prior to this slide was, why is it beneficial to the enemy? Is because just like we pray for, for our prayers to generationalize, that our children's children will be blessed because of the prayers we pray today, he wants to hinder that so that our generations will be affected. In my own family, I can see how the guilt of my father's father has, has trickled down into my siblings. And so he wants to hinder us in that way. And when we have a sense of false guilt, because that's what it is. Awesome. You know, true feelings of guilt keep us humble enough to recognize that we're not good enough. We receive God's grace and mercy. But when we have false guilt, that's where pride builds up, where we can't even receive the grace of our almighty God. So I just wanted to add that. My God. She say false guilt. <laughs> what you say, Jennifer? We ain't even do it. <laughs> Come on. The guilt of our fathers, our forefathers. Come on here. The guilt, false guilt. I was just selling that to Reverend Cheryl. Wow. That's true. False guilt. Mm. Yeah. Oh. What I love about my sister Jennifer, she's spiritual enough to see that that's not even my fight. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And she said something very powerful. If we've had generations that may not have walked closely with God, that may have not walked intimately with God, but it's in our spiritual bloodline, it's in our generations previous to us, but you're spiritual enough to know that God wants us to repent of sin, okay? There's been a many nights, and I'm more sure that uh, Minister Edwards has as well, Father, forgive the sins of my past generation. That's right. The sins of my mother, the sins of my father, the sins of my grandmother, grandfather, the sins of my spiritual leaders before me. Mm. That those things don't penetrate my generation and the generations to come. And God forgive my sin so that it don't affect my children. Amen. Amen. 
Let them not struggle with unrepented sin of past regenerations. Let me gener be the generation that say, yeah, we did it. Mm -hmm. Let me be the generation that said it stops with us. Let me be the generation that says, God, forgive us and make a way for my baby. Mm -hmm. So Minister Edwards was spiritual enough to see mm -hmm. that there's some stuff Paul struggled with. My God. Take note of that. My God. And if you yes. have not had just a session with God of repentance, of repentance, mm. mama's them, mama, and then we might have picked it up. So now you need to repent for yourself, but let's shut the door completely. That's right. Because our generations wasn't perfect. So God bless you, Minister Edwards. Thank you for that. Past, present, and purpose. Our last slide for the book, this particular chapter was pretty short. We, we've probably talked it to death and to God be the glory because y'all have blessed me today. But it was a very short chapter. And so we'll speak to this for a little bit, ladies, and then it'll, it'll be time to close out. God has handled it once and for all. And we've kind of um, talked about this, but I, I, I still want it. Uh-oh, I'm sorry. I still want it. Oh, I don't went on. Forgive me. I'm just a click and miss this morning. Okay. Um, God has handled it once and for all. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. This is another one of my most favorite because I am very much so humbled by my shortcomings, my weaknesses, my struggles, my humanity, my flesh, and my sinfulness that I pray for daily to do better in. I, I keep this scripture in my pocket to remind me. Mm. Okay. Let's not have an, I, I, your relationship with God is the most intimate, transparent relationship you will ever have. Okay. Um, if you don't understand that or um, think that that's possible, get in touch with me. But he's literally somebody you can tell everything. That's right. If you've been with us on Wednesday mornings, we have gone through the gospel of John chapter three and chapter four, and we've seen the intimacy and the love and yeah. the redemptive courage of God, of Jesus and the Samaritan woman. Okay. You can go back and listen to those prayers and those teachings, but we can be so transparent with them. Mm -hmm. He spoke, he told her all her junk, all her stuff. He just put it out there. Yeah, you didn't have five husbands and the one you with right now ain't yours, baby girl. Okay? okay? But she didn't leave ashamed, ridiculed, judged, uh, petrified, full of guilt. She left that conversation mm. excited, empowered, <laughs> understanding it was an opportunity for redemption. My God. She left there feeling his love and ran back and told a whole city of people that ostracized her, Yeah, talked about her. She had to go to the well in the heat of the day at noon. She couldn't go in the cool of the hours because everybody was there then, the other people. But she went back screaming to those people, come see a man, come see a man. So how, why did he approach her like that? Because he needed to get the stuff that was blocking their intimacy out of the way. Mm -hmm. That's why I love this scripture. Get the junk out of the way. Let's not get it twisted. God is a judge. God is love. God is all of those things. But he doesn't want any sin, lies, deception, or pretentiousness in the midst of y'all's intimacy. So I can get up here in this prayer room and get on the floor and tell God stuff I'd never tell Keith, the kids, you. Amen. 
Amen. Because I don't want nothing in between, and I know you see it anyway. And God, if it's anything I'm forgetting, and I think I'm right and I'm wrong, show it to me. Mm. I think I'm doing right as a mother. I think I'm doing right as a wife. I think I'm doing right as a nurse. I think I'm doing right as a minister, and I'm not. Show it to me. Amen. Because I don't want nothing in the way. Jesus didn't want anything in the way of him loving on her. So let's go and talk about them husbands you shacked up with. Because one thing, his righteousness is not going to play around is sin. Yeah. Yeah. But that conversation left her feeling like, oh my God, if I can get more people to you. That's why we don't judge people and beat them up and make them feel condemned. Yes. We put it out there because it is what it is. Yes. And then we talk about this redemptive love that got your back. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. You know, and Jesus might not have said it as, you know, jacked up as I'm saying it. You know, look, girl, you're ratchet, but come on. Amen. So if we confess our sins, he is faithful. Hmm. He is faithful and just. That's really what I'm talking about. He's just. He's not going to play around with your sin like it ain't there. Look, God, this is what I did. I'm sorry. Help me. That's not right. I'm killing myself. I'm, I'm making the ones who love me suffer with this foolishness. I'm cheating myself out of peace. So he's just now, but he's faithful and just and will forgive. How about that? Our sins. And guess else what he will do? He will purify us. Your approval don't purify me. God does. My, my. Your acceptance of me don't purify me. God does. I don't care if you're uncomfortable with my sin. He's not. That's why some of my story, you'll never know because you won't be able to see past it. Amen. But he sees all of it. Mm. And he still loves me. Still. He still forgives me. He's still purifying me Damn. of all unrighteousness. And why can he be so good to me? Because I wasn't pretentious with him. This is what it is, God. Yeah, my, my. This is what I've done. This is what I like. This is what I'm having a hard time forgiving. This is the person I don't like being around because I can't stand him because I wasn't pretentious. Mm. He can be faithful. He can be just. He can forgive. He can purify because I wasn't pretentious. That's why the scripture starts and says, if we confess. Mm. And sometimes my brothers and sisters, because we don't confess, mm. that's why the enemy can beat your head down. Say that. Mm -hmm. Say that. Mm -hmm. That's good. Say that. Because we don't come clean with our advocate in the courtroom. The enemy can step up there as the accuser and say, Lord, let me tell you something. And they ain't even talked to you about it. They ain't even asked for forgiveness. This is what they was doing. We sitting over there, and this is just a little imagination. Jesus looking like, what? <laughs> we ain't prayed about that. Why he know about that? And you ain't told me about that. Well, you know he know everything, but I'm just being funny. <laughs> hey, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it says if we confess our sins yeah and we're in the courtroom talking about can we have a moment you know can we <laughs> 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 so jesus what had happened was uh, when i was at <laughs> <laughs> let me sidebar real quick <laughs> that was going to come out. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, men and women of God. He is your best friend. 
He is your best friend. He is the lover of your soul. Yes, he is. Just like he did that Samaritan woman. He was like, baby girl, let's get all the trash out of the way because I needed to go to Samaria because I was concerned about you. Mm -hmm. Yes. He was leaving Judah. There was a quicker way to get to Galilee, but he says, no, I need to go through Samaria. Mm -hmm. I got a little lady I want to talk to. Okay. And what does she do? What does she do? She fessed up. And Jesus said, Yeah, I'm glad you said that because and the one you got right now ain't yours. She just put it out there. She did. Yes, she did. So if we confess our sins, there's a condition here to get his faithfulness for him to be just for him to forgive, for him to purify of mm -hmm. you from all unrighteousness. There's a condition here. You got to be real with him. Ain't that what you want in relationships when you find you a new boo? Okay. Just be real with me. Don't be lying to me. Be transparent. Why? Because you know that increases intimacy. Yes. Yes. I don't want you being, you know, one way with me and you're going over there and you got split personalities and double lives. Come on, now, be real with me. Well, why do you think Jesus want another kind of relationship? Okay. Mm -hmm. And you might, you want to, baby, you can't handle all, if I tell you everything, you, <laughs> that's probably what you want to say. <laughs> but he can take it all. Yes, he can. Amen. He's died for it. He's Thank died God. for it. Amen. That's why he's just like, come on, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. Because the mm -hmm. more you hold it in, the more condemnation, like Tanil said, uh, the more shame, like Linda said, the more guilt, like Michelle said, and, and just the more generational junk, like Jennifer referred to, he can hold in. Why? Mm -hmm. The enemy can hold against you. Why? Because you just ain't came out and said, look, God, this is what it is. That's right. That's right. This is what it is. And he can say, whoo, thank God you finally gave it to me. And, and now I can show you my faithfulness. I ain't going to talk about you. I ain't going to gossip about you. I ain't going to bring it up. I can be faithful. I can be just. Yes. Now I can deal with it because it's out in the open. So I can put my judgment on it. And guess what? I've judged you innocent. Amen. God. I've I judged think that's, you saved. That's, that's where the author found herself in her, in page 96, when she gives her whole example of knowing that she's coming up to this place. Uh -huh. But she had to have an intimate relationship with God before. She already worked the steps in asking for forgiveness before she had to go past that exit again. And then once she gets to that point where it's just so tense and she's sweating and her eyes are filling, filling up with tears, and then she hears the sweet sound of the Lord saying, Priscilla, wipe your tears on page 97 in the middle. Wipe your tears away. That road is now behind you. I have other roads in store for your future, roads I've been preparing for you. Until she was able to completely let go what God had already forgiven her, her eyes were not open to the next roads that were available for her. But she had to have that intimate relationship with God where she was already working through her forgiveness before she got to that point. That's right. My God. That's right. My God. So that guilt and condemnation and frustration and shame would not overtake right. her. That's Amen. right. Because she was going to minister, I believe. I think she was headed yes. to minister. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Wipe yeah. away. And if she could have been kept in bondage, then her ministry in that moment would have been limited. Yeah. Yeah. And as, as Tanil said, but because she had already worked out this scripture. Yeah. Paint this one on your mirrors. Wipe away your tears. God has handled it once and for all. That road is behind you. I've been preparing you for your future. Experience grace like a trampoline instead of quicksand. God is not living in the past 
as the enemy wants to keep our minds. We only live by grace anyway. We Amen. only live by grace anyway. And when you understand that, like my little weak example about my paper, when you understand that that's the only way you're making it anyway, not by your perfection. That's right. That's right. Not by your works. Not by you getting it right every day and turning your nose down at other people. No. The only way we're making it is by grace and mercy anyway, which should cause what? Endless worship and a free-flowing testimony. And all yeah. of y'all, I was sitting here and the Holy Spirit said to me, yeah, we trying to bring back testimonies, but y'all done testified today. Praise Amen. God. Praise God. Praise God. Jennifer, Michelle, Tanil, Linda, y'all done put it out there today. We've had mine. You've had, uh, what is that? I'm count five testimonies today. Praise God. Endless worship. And, and do you see how free flowing those testimonies were? Oh my God. Oh my God. Any comments about this slide, ladies? Any comments, beautifuls? One other thing that stood out for me is at the end of all of that, God spoke to her and say, I make all things new. And that just continue, it just resounded. I make all things new, all things, no matter what happened. I make all things new. Who cares what fight you got into? I make all things new. Who cares what sin you committed? I can make all things new. And that just, that, that then leads into the freedom. Amen. And just to piggyback off of um, Sister Tanil, um, that's why I really love that scripture, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And I think she has, she does have it in the book where it says, therefore, um, we are in, when we are in Christ Jesus, we are new creatures and that old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. And that ending of that scripture was like a saving grace for me, where it says all things become new. So even our past becomes new and God is using it for his glory. And, and it's, the result is just seeing the beautiful panel the panelists, you know, from where they've come from, and as well as you Facebook fans. Praise God. All things come. Jennifer, any, any comments? Jennifer, Michelle, on this slide before we move forward? Reverend Allen, I think we pretty much have, you know, have, have covered everything. Amen. My sisters on this panel, we, there is nothing else I don't think anybody could add to to what, what we've already said and how we'll be overcomers of our past. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Somebody find for me, um, Minister Jennifer, anything before we close out? Let the church say amen. Amen. Somebody find for me um, and, and read out when you get to it, um, John 16, 33. And I pray that those of you who have watched today, you have written down the slides from the PowerPoint. You have written down the scriptures that the ladies have referred to. Those are weapons. Those are weapons. Those Amen. are weapons. And so take those weapons and fight because you've already been guaranteed, guaranteed, guaranteed the victory. Amen. John 16, 33, ladies. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Mm. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Amen. 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 I have overcome Amen. the world. Anything Amen. you experience in this world an intimate relationship with the overcomer guarantees your victory. He said, be of good cheer. You're going to experience some things. 
You're going to experience some things. Those things are going to make you stronger. Those things are going to build muscle. Those things are going to give you a testimony. Those things are going to carve a pathway for you. My God. Here because guess what? In me, we've already overcome the world. Thank you, God. We've already overcome the world. And I want to say to you ladies on the panel, the comments are awesome. Um, this session has been such a blessing to me. Thank you ladies for your transparency. Thank you ladies for the truth. Thank you ladies for walking and being so specific. Thank you ladies for teaching about prayer. Thank you ladies for sharing your past and how God has changed and saved your lives and caused you to be effective in somebody else's life. Thank you for your testimony, your transparency, uh, for being obedient. And I just say that to you ladies, because once again, um, this day would not have happened unless the five of us would have pressed on. Praise God. Praise God. So a call to prayer, page 99 in our book, a call to prayer. Um, and I just took this right out of the book. She has the acronym for prayer that says to thank him completely for forgiving you, cleansing you, and changing you. That was all the work of the Spirit of God, guys. That was all the work of the Spirit of God, the way that Jesus had made for us to be reunited with the King, for our minds to be restored to kingdom thinking, and the Holy Spirit to do the changing inside of us. Repent. Repent. See the foolishness of anything that tries to perpetrate old sin patterns. And by his stripes, you walk away. By the strength of the Holy Spirit, walk away. Like Tanil said, she had already prayed through that repentance. So when that fork mm -hmm. came in the road, she was able to walk away. Right. That's right. Ask for freedom, for release. As for the truth of those scriptures we've read, as mm -hmm. Tanil said, God, get me out the halfway house. Mm -hmm. I want complete freedom release for the ability to defeat lies and embrace truth. Yes. Sometimes, and we taught this in Just For My Soul, the lies have carved a groove. Mm -hmm. It has caused a pathway in our thinking. The guy, you know what a, how a ditch is or when you're driving and your tire gets in one of those grooves on the road and you got to kind of jerk the wheel to get back on the pathway. That's how some of the thinking is. Wow. Okay. And the power of the gospel, the power of meetings like this, the power of the word has to come in, bust that groove up mm. and get you to embrace truth and carve a new pathway of truth. Some of this stinking thinking is just our old habits. Amen. You got to press in and pray and take this word and fight and embrace truth so that change can take place. And then rehearse his yes. Because you, by resurrection power, because of you, I'm sorry, by resurrection power, can walk in a new way of life. Mm. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. And old things, old, yeah, yeah. old things have passed away. Behold, all things, all things have become new. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today. We thank you today. We thank you today for the newness of life. Thank you. We thank you for loving us in such a way that you know exactly who we are. You know exactly where we struggled. You know exactly where we've fallen. But your love, your redemption, your peace, and your strength picks us up and keeps us moving, God. And for that, we say thank you. And you love us so much, God, you've already paid the price for what we've done. God, forgive us when we've complained yes, God. about the lot that you've given us. Change our minds so that instead of complaints, we can start to give you glory. Yes. 
we can jump off that trampoline, God, and get our feet out of the quicksand. So Father, I ask that your Holy Spirit would strengthen and encourage everyone that's heard the panelists, guests, and myself today. I pray that they will go running just like the Samaritan woman and say, hey, I got to introduce you to a man that'll wipe away all the shame, all the guilt, all the condemnation and cause you to be free. That's what we want to come of this today. But God, first, we've got to realize that we're free. Father, I pray that you introduce everybody and everyone in their circle of influence to your love, your goodness, your peace, your grace, your righteousness, all that you have for them, God. Yes, God. And may hearts of repentance, hearts of obedience, and hearts of surrender follow your love. We pray that for our children's 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 children and their friends, yes, for our coworkers, for our family members, for our yes. church members, for everybody in our circle of influence. Yes, we pray that prayer, God. And Father, today all we have on our tongue is a thank you. Thank you. Thank you that the enemy's lying tricks and accusations did not have their intended end. My God. We may have been saved, but we'd have been in our grave powerless. Yes. So Father, our prayer is that you cause us to be spiritual, cause us to soar, cause us to give you glory, and cause us to use our story as a springboard. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, amen. amen. And I would just like to just put out there and say, if you are listening or um, been introduced to these book studies and you're, you, you're like, okay, well, who is this Christ? I want to know him. What is this relationship, this lady, this crazy lady talking about? You have our contact information at the beginning of the slides. Get in contact with myself. Myself, Miss Linda, one of these beautiful ladies on the panelists will reach out to you and introduce you to him and pray with you. Yeah. start you on this journey. We already said in our mission and vision, it's about relationship and even mentorship. It can't be done alone. Amen. But understand we come and correct. Yes. Because we don't have time to play. We want the best for your life. Mm -hmm. We want the best for your life. And we found out and you've heard today that's Jesus Christ, because he's been the best thing ever happened to us. Amen. The best thing that's ever happened to us. So as we close out, know that we love you. I thank these beautiful angels for uh, rocking with me and walking with me, because this is nothing just with me. All of us make this happen. Our next book study will be December the 5th. Okay, December the 5th, if I'm not mistaken, that, that may be the first Saturday in December, 9.30 a.m., same bat place, same bat channel. Um, following um, that one, the second Saturday will be just for my soul's monthly topic, which will, be, which will be part three of the Holy Spirit. Join us, join us, join us this coming Wednesday like our Facebook page, request to become a member of our Facebook group. It is a private group. Um, I'll accept you in so that you can get all the notifications. We're on Instagram. We are on Twitter. Um, go out to YouTube. Um, you can take those things, those videos off of YouTube. You can actually uh, forward them and share them for individuals that are not on social media. Um, please, please go out and help the Gulf Coast Relief effort for the state of Louisiana, Mississippi, that whole Gulf Coast region that's been hit by the five hurricanes that flyer is posted on our websites. And we are praying for many of you. I'm sorry, it's posted on our Facebook page because you have family members there as well. 
at the bottom of the screen if you are interested in donating. Um, the information is there, Cash App and or PayPal. And as we close out, always, always remember, God is truly the lover of your soul. Bye-bye for now. All right, ladybugs. Thank y'all. Have a beautiful day. Have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.